Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ikab al Badamna, senior occupational therapist. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, the role of occupational therapy with children with Down syndrome. Uh, as you know, that the occupational therapy play uh, a great role with uh, Down syndrome children uh, by providing them with different type of uh, activity and exercise to make them more independent in their, in their life. Uh, and increase their function and particip uh, participation uh, that help them to be more uh, independent. Uh, and this is like involved many aspects and uh, component for their life, such as like uh, physical, sensory, social and emotional, cognitive and behavior in general. So maybe it can be a different type of exercise and activity, or we can like modify or alternate uh, some uh, like the way to make uh, like energy conversation and, uh, and like work simplification. So usually the, the rule of OT like it will be enabling the children to be engaged and perform the occupation that are important and meaningful for to them. Uh, occupational, uh, let us just like to talk what about occupation. Uh, it's like activity that a child want and need to do uh, within their day and uh, to develop a child independence in the area of self-care, productivity, and leisure. When we are talking about self-care, it's about uh, uh, toileting, like dressing, hygiene, and eating, uh, productivity, academic tasks as at school, employment, for example, if, if he's like the Down syndrome, he's at school, which productivity I'm, I'm looking to be uh, the child to be independent uh, in it, uh, like um, for example, in school, I want him to uh, to take his book from his bag. Uh, if his employment, for example, as a work placement in a hotel, like how he's preparing uh, the bed and all of that. Uh, Leisure like particip uh, participation in a rec recreational or social activity or hobbies in general. So occupational performance is the optimal condition for integrating best knowledge into practice. It's like it's have a three component. It's have a three component is a person, environment, and occupation. Uh, we are, when we are talking about the person, it will be for the skill, experience, interest, and attitude. When we are talking about uh, environment, it will be demands, uh, structure, community, knowledge, and routine. And in, in the part of occupation, it will be transition, evaluation, adaptation, and reflection. In general, what is the role of occupational therapy with Down syndrome? Or let us say the pediatric occupational therapy, it's like stabilizing the life of kids with motor skills issues. So if like uh, the, the child with Down syndrome, he have like a high platoon. So I want to stabilize uh, so his fine motor skills, for example, it will be affected. So I want to... Uh, stabilize uh, or like improve the spine motor skills to help him to uh, perform an, a different type of activity activity uh, and by the end stabilize his life. Uh, it helps in overall personality development, which is like, for example, if we're going to talk uh, uh, about some type of motor issue like motor planning. So this motor planning, it will be affect him to perform uh, some activity in his daily life skill, which is affect his personality. And it's help him also to express uh, his feeling uh, better, which is like uh, one of the component occupational therapy is working on. Uh, it's about the communication with like how he's express himself, how he's like uh, talking uh, with the other, like uh, request his need. Uh, and all of these things. And we can also, as an occupational therapy, which I mentioned before, that uh, modify the environment or provide them with assistive technology, like an AAC to be communicated with the other. And also the occupational therapy can provide a combination of approach intervention, such as sensory integration, which we will talk in details more, uh, and functional skills, social skill, a new development therapy to help the child adapt the behavior to help reduce the unwanted behavior. Uh, development, uh, developmental milestones, which we need to focus on that uh, for the uh, for the children and like the children with uh, Down syndrome. Uh, like you see the uh, the picture here, we are 
like the base, it will be the sensory system, which is all the stimulation which the child he will receive it. It must be um, development uh, in, in, in a proper way. Uh, this sensory system or stimulation should be different, be different between visual, auditory, tactile, uh, olfactory, proprioception, and vestibular. A gross motor skill, which is uh, that we will check like the postural control for the child, stability, muscle tone, and strength. A fine motor skill, which it will be bilateral coordination, eye hand coordination, dexterity, in hand manipulation, and all of that. Uh, Self care skill, uh, which is like grooming, dressing, eating, uh, trans transporting, all of that. And by the end, is the life skill. So when we want to reach the life skill, we need to have a proper a proper improvement for each of the milestone development. And then, uh, so the development milestone are a set of functional skills or age specific tasks that most children can do at a certain age of range. Uh, it may vary, but uh, a bit as uh, every child is a unique. So because you know, every child is, has a unique uh, improvement and development for his skills. So maybe there is some uh, different with the age. So for example, one child at six months, he can sit alone. The other child, he need like to be sit alone by seven and the other child, maybe he can be sit alone at, at five. So it's, it, would, it would be there is a, a little different between them. A gross motor skill, it's a using large group of muscle to sit, stand, walk, run, and all of that, keeping balance and changing position. Uh, and it will be uh, important in all daily life skill. Fine motor skill is using hand to be able to eat, draw, dress, play, write, and do many other things. Language is using body language and gesture, communicating and understanding what others say. Uh, cognitive thinking skill include learning, understanding, problem solving, uh, learning, and re remembering. Uh, social is interacting with others and having relationship with the family, friend, and teacher. Uh, cooperating and responding to the feeling of others. So all of that, all, all of this skill, the occupational therapy <clears throat> can work on that to improve, to improve it and make it like a proper development so the child, he can be independent in his life. So for example, the gross motor skill, it's like a motor planning, uh, gross coordination, uh, fine motor skill, it's like, um, uh, let us say, static uh, or dynamic tribal grasp. A hockey grasp, a power grasp, language is like receptive and uh, receptive and expressive language and how to communicate. In cognitive, it will be like recognition and visual perception and all of that. We can work on this and social interaction is the, by the end, the self-regulation, which we are looking with the child uh, with Down syndrome. So today I will just uh, talk about the sensor processing uh, challenges which uh, may the Down syndrome children may face. It's the, the last uh, research suggests that approximately 49% of individuals with Down syndrome experience sensory processing challenge compared to approximately five, five to 16% of, uh, of the general population. So like 49 is not like, uh, it's a huge number, it's the big number. We need to focus on that sensory processing because the sensory processing also, it, it affects uh, the way how the child, he will be react for all activity in his daily life skills. So um, I'm just want to say like a quick example. For example, if the child, uh, he want to dress his jacket, so, and he have a problem with the proprioception and vestibular, so he don't know, was his position uh, like his his hand? He don't know where it where is where is it in the in the space, and uh, this one also with the proprioception it will affect also his bilateral motor coordination. So he don't know how to pull uh, the two side of the jacket to wear it. So it, it so it will affect the, all his daily life skill, especially that's like uh, the independent. Uh, children with Down syndrome can experience difference in the way and they process and respond to sensory information. What is the importance of sensory processing? Why we are always looking for the sensory processing with the children and especially with Down syndrome? 
um, children with sensory uh, processing challenge may experience uh, reduced participation in activity of daily life, such as such as like dressing, eating, maybe the child, uh, because of his sensor processing, he will have uh, a problem with his, uh, with his proprioception, which is affect his eye-hand coordination. So maybe it will affect his eating. He cannot hold the spoon and like start to eat the rice, for example. Uh, impaired self-esteem and increased level of anxiety, an increased level of frustration because some sometimes like he cannot do that action or he cannot do that that skills, which is affect uh, his um, which is affect his uh, uh, like uh, performance and be frustration. Uh, difficulty with self-regulation by the end, you know, as uh, the outcome of the sensor processing, it will be the self-regulation, so it will be affected. Uh, reduced participation in sensory experience can limit a child learning opportunity. Child learn about their world throughout active exploration and experimentation with their environment. Uh, there is a lot of sensory uh, strategy. We will just have a quick. Uh, adapt the environment to manage sensory uh, sensitivity. So for example, if the child, uh, he have a problem with some type of sound. So we, the teacher or the parent in the home, they start to modify the place for the child to be modified uh, and like to reduce uh, that, that uh, auditory uh, input by, for example, to put him uh, far from the door or from the window. He will be like in the front, uh, in the first line of the class to be like near to the teacher. Sometimes we can also provide them with some assistive technology or some assistive devices, such as like if we want to put for him uh, like a speaker, um, like uh, there's some uh, type of speaker to reduce the noise. So it will give you like some, to some voice tone, so it will be uh, eliminate uh, any noise. Incorporate sensory seeking need into a safe and fun activity that will provide the desired intensity of the sensory input. Some of the child, maybe they have like a hyper responsive to vestibular or to uh, uh, proprioception. So the child, he like to move and he like to run away. So we, in here, you need to, uh, the teacher or the parent, they need to contact the occupational therapy and doing like, for example, the sensor profile and see what is the need for the child and uh, make a sensory diet for them uh, to provide that child with this input, uh, like for example, by, by schedule it for every two hours or like two times per day, it will be different from child to another. It create more functional and appropriate way to allow for a sensory seeking behavior in the classroom, which for example, we can use a different type of uh, sensory strategy like to give the child the putty or do the brushing or put a wet blanket to put it on his lap. Um, so there's a different type of strategy we can use it inside that classroom. I would like just to, to, to be more like how I can link the sensory uh, with the Down syndrome and how it's affect the daily life skill. So I will just explain something like, for, for example, if the child, he have a problem with the proprioception, which is like your awareness about your body in the space and vestibular, which is keeping, uh, uh, keeping your balance while you are moving your head and your eyes. So this tool, it will affect your bilateral motor coordination and it will affect your motor planning. Uh, it will affect uh, your gross coordination and uh, like cross midline and all of that. So if the child, for example, the same example we, I mentioned it before, if he want to wear his jacket, okay, if we will do analysis uh, for this skill that the child, he need to move his hand to the back to put uh, his, uh, his hand inside the sleeve. And also he need to move both hands at the same time to close, to pull out the jacket uh, and uh, close, uh, close the zipper. So all of that, it will be fall under the bilateral motor coordination, motor planning, all of that skill, which is maybe it will be a problem from the proprioception and vestibular. So in the treatment plan, if we start to work in his proprioception and vestibular and provide a different type of strategy or exercise or activity to the parent, uh, the parent will notice that the child will be 
more independent in his uh, in his daily life skill and be more independent in the world. Uh, the gross motor skills, which is uh, one of the components that occupational therapy is looking uh, for, it is like a postural support and stability in general. It's important to provide a proper postural support while seating due to the child low tone and hypermobility, and also the upright position. Uh, it will it will affect uh, the child. Like for example, if the child is sitting on uh, on his uh, chair uh, in the classroom and he's lying forward, mostly you will see the child with Down syndrome is lying forward. Uh, this uh, this position it will affect a lot of things. First, first, like I will just mention it, like. Uh, uh, the shoulder stability for the child. If you will notice that the child, he will uh, put hand, uh, his hand, it will be away from his corn. So that makes his shoulder stability is weak. And as a biomechanic, uh, it will affect his tripod grasp. Uh, so it will be more static and you will see that his joint is not flexible in the movement and he will press a lot of uh, on, the, on, on the pencil, for example. And also this position, it will affect about his visual. So he don't, he cannot explore all that, all the paper perfectly. But the child, if he's sitting in the upright position, uh, so by uh, by improving his core muscle and shoulder stability, it will like as a biomechanical, it will reduce uh, the amount of the pressure in his uh, joints. So he will be start having a dynamic uh, tripod grasp and all of that. A stable base of support uh, is necessary to facilitate and function for fine motor task. Uh, stabi stability begins at the trunk, uh, progressing to elbow, rest, and hand. And this is why always you see the occupational therapy is uh, always improving the core muscle uh, for the child. The first thing we are starting always, like when we want to try uh, train the child on the uh, writing, we will starting from core muscle, then shoulder stability, and then eye-hand coordination, visual perception to the fine motor skills. We never start with the fine motor st uh, skills directly. Uh, supportive seating, uh, supporting an upright posture may improve muscle tone. Uh, it will be a pressure distribution, decrease fatigue and strain, decrease tendency to, uh, to lock joint, which is we, we mentioned it before. Uh, fine motor development, uh, foundation skills are important uh, for a fine motor development. Uh, ch uh, children uh, build on previously uh, learned skill as they progress towards more complicated tasks. Uh, children with best learned skill throw, uh, throughout meaningful activity, building blocks of optimal fine motor uh, development. And here also the sensory or sensor processing, uh, it will have an effect on the tight perception, postural control, bilateral coordination, and dexterity and hand manipulation and all of that. So the, the, the fine motor skill before I'm starting as an OT working on motor, fine motor skill, I need to be sure that the child, he don't have any sensor processing issue. Uh, second, I need to improve his core muscle skill and shoulder stability. Then I can go to the fine motor, uh, fine motor skill engine. Uh, and uh, this is uh, all for now. Um, I'm sorry that because the, the time is short, only 20 minutes. Any question, I will be with you, inshallah. Thank you very all. Uh, thank you very much, all. Thank you.